There we go. PC recording has started. Good morning and welcome to the New York City Council remote hearing for the Committee on Land Use. At this time, we ask that all council members and staff turn on their video for verification purposes. To minimize disruptions, please place your cell phone on silent or vibrate. We thank you for your cooperation. Mr. Chair, we are ready to begin. Thank you. Um, good morning. I am Councilmember Rafael Salamanca. I'm the chair of the Committee on Land Use. I am joined remotely today by my colleagues. Today we have uh, Chair Adams, Councilmember Reynoso, Credentic Rivera, Deutsch, Ayala, Chair Moya, Miller, Barron, Borelli, Cool, Diaz, and Gibson. Today we will vote on a number of applications referred out of our subcommittees. Before, uh, before we begin, I would like to recognize the committee council to review the remote meeting procedures. Thank you, Chair Salamanca. I am Julie Lubin, counsel to this committee. Council members who would like to ask questions or may, make remarks should use the Zoom raise hand function. The raise hand button should appear at the bottom of the participant panel. I will announce council members who have questions or remarks in the order that they raise their hands and Chair Salamanca will then recognize members to speak. We ask that you please be patient if technical difficulties arise today. Chair Salamanca will now continue with today's agenda items. Thank you, council. Today we will vote to approve pre-considers LU703, the Landmark Preservation Commission designation of Public School 48, now known as P75Q, the Robert E. Peary School, as a historic landmark. The landmark site is located in the northwest corner of 155th Street and 108th Avenue in South Jamaica neighborhood of Queens, represented by Councilmember Adams. We will also vote to approve pre-considers LU704, an application submitted by the New York City Health and Hospital Corporation, pursuant to section 73856 of the HHC Enabling Act for approval to enter into a 99 year lease for land on Woolhall campus in council member Carnegie's district in Brooklyn. With this approval, Community Life will develop an eight story residential building to provide affordable and supportive housing. Pursuant to council rules 11, dot one zero F, we will call up to committee pre-considered LU 693, the DCOB Commons project submitted by the Department of Housing Preservation and Development pursuant to Article 16 of the General Municipal Law and 197C of the New York City Charter. The application requests a designation of an urban development action area, the approval of an urban development action area project, and approval of the disposition of city-owned property to a developer selected by the HPD for property located at 633-639 DeKalb Avenue, 648-654 DeKalb Avenue, and 1187 Fulton Street in Councilmember Carnegie's district in Brooklyn. Our approval of the request actions will facilitate the construction of three residential developments containing approximately 84 affordable rental units and 1,470 square feet of commercial space, which would be developed under the HPD's ELLA program. We will also vote to approve the modifications LU705 and 706, the 1501-1555 60th Street rezoning. The application requests a zoning map amendment to replace an existing M1-1 district with an R7A slash C2-4 district and a zoning text amendment to establish a mandatory inclusionary housing area with MIH option one and two for property in council member Yeager's district in Brooklyn. These actions are intended to facilitate the development of three new buildings, two on the north side and one on the south side of 60th Street between 15th and 16th Avenue. The building on the north side of the street would each be seven stories with ground floor commercial and residential uses above, including 23 and 39 units in each building. However, the R7A district allows development up to 85 feet in height and up to a maximum FAR of 4.6. The building on the south side of the building would be eight stories with a ground floor commercial, approximately 40 apartments. Our modifications will be to reduce the rezoning area by excluding certain areas that front along 15th Avenue. By implementing this rezoning with modifications, we are creating new affordable housing through MIH that would otherwise would not be able to be developed here. At the same time, through our modifications to reduce the rezoning area, new growth will be balanced with preserving the longstanding business, which employs approximately 35 people and protecting existing residents in approximately 18 units that are not rent regulated from displacement. Through this, 
Though this is not the intent, the significant upzoning could cause displacement of these active businesses and therefore jobs, which are most important to maintain in this time of economic stress due to the COVID-19 pandemic, as well as the small residents which do not have the protections of rent regulation. In addition, the modification to reduce the rezoning area will ensure that building on an R7A scale do not overwhelm the adjacent R5 zoning district, where the prominent character is two to three story homes. We will also modify the proposed zoning text amendment so that the proposed MIH area is consistent with the modified rezoning area. Regarding LU 707 and 708, the 265 Front Street rezoning, I note that the council is in receipt of a written statement dated December 15, 2020 for the applicant, stating that the application has been withdrawn. Pursuant to council rules 11.60B, LU 707 and 708 are filed to be removed from our calendar. We will also vote to approve with modification modifications proposed resolutions number 1445A, the information services franchise authorizing resolution submitted by the mayor to the council pursuant to charter sections 363. Our approval will authorize the granting of a non-exclusive franchises for the installation of cable, wire, and or optical fiber and associated equipment and in the inalienable property of the city, including through pipes, conduits, and similar improvements thereto to be used in providing one or more telecommunication services. The telecommunication services that such franchises would provide would be the information services as such in terms is defined in the federal law and which does not include cable television services. The proposed authorizing resolution differs from the prior information services authorizing resolution from 2003 in that, among other changes, minimal criteria shall be used by do it to elevate the RFP responses and franchises will be required to provide data to the city. The council's modifications would require future franchises to report compliance or labor transparency regulations would encourage the provision of affordable high-speed broadband services to residential and commercial customers and would require compliance with any federal, state, or local law requiring net neutrality. Members of the committee and members representing effective districts who have questions or remarks about today's items should use the raise hand button now. Council, will you announce members in order that have their hands raised? Yes, um, Chair Salamanca. Um... I thought Councilmember Miller had his hand raised, but perhaps not. So I don't see any hands hands raised at this time. Councilmember Miller, did you want to give a statement? No, uh, thank you, Chair Salamanca. I did have some questions about the uh, uh, do it piece in uh, Section three eight three and and whether or not that. Um, uh, this new policy uh, meets the labor threshold, considering that we've had a lot of, uh, uh, you know, uh, over the past five years, a lot of contention with cable providers and and uh, the labor movement, uh, whether it is what we've seen most lately with Spectrum or the, the earlier years with, with, with uh, some of the other uh, providers there. It's been some ongoing labor strife. We want to make sure that we were able to tighten that up and not sure if, um, uh, because it was very vague what you mentioned about the labor provisions, if you could drill down on that a little bit more so that we can know that, uh, uh, that there are some protections for the men and women that deliver these services. Yes. Uh, give me one second, uh, Councilmember Miller, so that I can get you that answer. Okay, thank you. <clears throat> Go ahead. 
Council Member Miller. I'm, I'm here. All right. So I have two responses. It's my understanding that the CW, CWA is good with our proceeding with this. Okay. Um, and also the language that I received from the council is that there shall be provisions requiring the franchise, the franchisee to provide maps and other information, including resiliency information regarding the locations of facilities in the alienable property of the city and in accordance with applicable law, labor transparency and reports. Okay, thank you. Okay. Are there any other questions from members of the committee? I All see right. no other, I see no other questions. All right. Well, we'll see none. I will now call for a vote in accordance with the recommendations of the subcommittee and local members to approve LU 693-703-704 and to approve with modifications, I have described resolutions 1445A and LU705 and 706, and to file LU707 and 708 to remove them from our calendar. Will the clerk please call the roll? And we, we can start with Chair Adams. Uh, good morning, uh, William Martin Committee Clerk. Roll call vote committee on land use. All items are coupled. Council Member Adams. Thank you so much, Chair Salamanca, for indulging me this morning. I vote aye on all. Thank you. Chair Salamanca. Aye, Anno. Gibson. Good morning, colleagues. I vote aye on all. Thank you. Barron. Thank you. Permission to explain my vote? Council Member Barron to explain her vote. Thank you so much. I just want to commend uh, Land Use 704, which talks about uh, accommodations that are going to be built by H&H in &H the making provisions for those of us who are the most needy and to make sure that it's affordable to the community that lives there. And just to briefly comment on land use 703, which talks about the historical and architectural significance of PS48, presently known as P75Q, and to make reference once again to the architectural design of what is commonly called a cartouche, but which has its origins back in Egypt and was originally called by the Egyptian a chenou. It's an oval with a horizontal line on the bottom and it includes hieroglyphic symbols. In this case, it has other kinds of symbols on it just to make reference to the historical African origins of the cartouche and to say that I vote aye on all with the exception of 705 and 706. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, Deutsch. I and all. Cool. I will I and all. Levin. Either one. Permission to explain my vote. <laughs> Permission granted. Uh, thank you very much, Chair. Um, uh, I just uh, I just want to take a, a moment. I said it in subcommittee, but I want to say it in the full committee as well. Um, that um, I do want to express my appreciation to the applicant at uh, 265 Front Street. And it's unfortunate, in my opinion, that we are where we are, where uh, they'll be withdrawing their application today. Um, they uh, um, uh, expressed willingness to amend their application at city planning uh, from an R6A to an R6B. This is in the Vinegar Hill neighborhood, which is a, you know, a, a neighborhood that largely um, uh, buildings built uh, um, in the 1830s, 1840s, um, situated between um, the Navy Yard, Con Edison plant on the river, and um, Farragut Houses, NYCHA development. And um, they, uh, the community expressed a, a desire to uh, uh, keep the context at R6B. Um, the, the, uh, uh, the community board, um, agreed with this, the borough president agreed with this, I agreed with this, the neighborhood association agreed with this, and the applicant all agreed with this. Um, unfortunately, um, uh, Department of City Planning did not um, and um, would not uh, agree to consider an R6B application. And um, so that's why uh, we're in the position we're in today. 
Um, and it is regrettable um, because we are going from a manufacturing uh, lot that right now uh, just is a parking lot for, for trucks. Um, and uh, so I just wanna express my um, regrets on this uh, and uh, appreciation for um, uh, the applicant's uh, willingness to be accommodating to the community's concerns. And it's unfortunate that we were not able to achieve a positive outcome. Uh, with that, I vote aye on all. Thank you, uh, Council Member Levin. Um, Clerk, can you please call um, Council Member Traeger up next to vote? Sure, Council Member Traeger. I vote aye, and I thank the chair for his, his help. Thank you. Thank you. Miller. Permission to explain my vote, please. Permission granted. Okay. Um, well, I, I, I thank you, Chair, for indulging me and in, in providing that additional information, considering as a chair of the Committee on Civil Service and Labor, what we have gone through over the past six or seven years with uh, many uh, of the companies within this industry uh, in terms of their um, response to their workers and, and the actions that they were taken, many of the subsequent very contentious strikes and provisions that were not uh, abided by, uh, by many of the companies that would benefit from this. And the fact that we have not been engaged to know that, that, uh, that uh, many of the suggestions and provisions that we put forth were, uh, would be uh, a part of this that I, I will be voting uh, I on all with the exception of resolution 1445. And I would encourage my colleagues to do the same as well. Thank you. Thank you. Council member Reynoso. Uh, permission to explain my vote? Yes, council member Reynoso to explain his vote. Um, uh, first, it's nice to see you, Ralph, and I'm glad you're doing this work with your son uh, and do the, the school, the, the learning. Um, that home learning, as you can hear my son in the background, doing more crying than learning. Um, I, I just want to echo the sentiments of council member, uh, Danique, uh, Danique Miller. Um, I just feel like we as a council have not done enough or taken any action on reforming the franchisee approval process. We're going to go through the exact same process for something that is not related to cable, it's not related to, to internet. I get it. So this is, uh, I guess, less impactful than being able to modify those contracts or those franchises to do, to actually follow through and do what we expect it to do. Um, but um, this has to be, and I'm hoping, Chair, that you could be helpful to us in making this the last time we ever vote to send anything to the I believe it's the FCFC, um, uh, the Franchise uh, Revision Commission, um, and, and allow for the city of New York to go through these, um, these uh, approval of franchises without us, having to re without us reforming it. All we're doing is like uh, just rubber stamping this stuff and moving it forward and allowing them to continue to mess up. And then every single year we have a hearing on, on franchises and how terrible they are, but we approve them. So I agree with Council Member Miller. But what I'm hearing here is that CWA was able to negotiate something or was able to approve this and thought that this was uh, inconsequential to the work that they're doing related to, to Spectrum and Verizon. So in, in, because of that, I'm going to vote aye on all. But I do want to echo the sentiments of Councilmember Miller. We've, we, we, history continues to repeat itself here. And we've done no, edu no new education to council members. And we've also done no reforms. So... Um, Chair, if you could, like, a, you know, I, I hope we don't have another conversation about franchises that doesn't doesn't speak to reforming it, um, to reforming the process. But thank you for for giving me this time to speak on this issue. But I, I vote aye on all. Thank you, Councilmember Reynoso. Gordenchik. Uh, permission to briefly explain my vote. Councilmember Gordenchik. I just want to associate myself with um, the remarks of Councilman Miller and Councilman Reynoso. Those of us who have been um, following uh, the strike against Spectrum by our brothers and sisters of local three IBEW know that um, 1800 New York City families continue to be uh, literally out on the street um, because uh, Spectrum refused to negotiate. 
And I know that the situation isn't exactly analogous today um, and that I was assured that there were approvals from both CWA and Local 3. Uh, I still want to raise that point as uh, Councilman Miller and Councilman Reynoso did. Uh, it is, um, there was an overwhelming support for the, for the strikers, but uh, as time fades, um, I just want to uh, remind my colleagues here that uh, they're facing yet another holiday season and another new year um, still on strike. So with that, I vote aye and all, and I thank uh, you for listening. And I thank you, Chair, for your indulgence. Thank you, Council Member. Council Member Ayala. I vote aye and all. Council Member Diaz. Di en todo. Moya. Aye and all. Rivera. Aye. Borelli. I vote aye. Okay, by a vote of 16 in the affirmative, zero in the negative, and no abstentions, all items are adopted by the committee. The exception of the following items, uh, land use item 705, land use item 706, and resolution 1445A are adopted by the committee, 15 in the affirmative, one in the negative, and no abstentions. All right. Thank you. I would like to thank the members of the public, my colleagues, council and land use staff for attending today's hearing. This meeting is hereby adjourned.